Very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome you all to the third day of electrical and ELV CPD program conducted by Magnus Academy. Today we have a very senior and experienced engineer who has been in the industry for the last 20 years or so. Before we are moving into the main session, we would like to highlight certain ground rules which we conduct the CPD program in general. We start the course session sharp at 7.30. It will go maximum up, up to 9, 9.15, and we have a Q&A session afterwards as well. And our chat box is not allowed to you to chat when we have the course session in process. At the same time, we are not allowing anybody to make raise any questions at the time when we have the course session. When we have the Q&A session, we give opportunities for you to put your hand raise symbol in your Zoom platform, or else you can shoot any questions to WhatsApp numbers by the organizers or the moderator myself as well. But please make sure that the Q&A session may not be enough to have a, such a huge content we have. Therefore, you can keep your questions, shoot, to your certain WhatsApp numbers and we can compile them and we can send to our presenter and he will reply and we can send those answers to the WhatsApp groups which we have created. And there was a question at the very beginning and there were some queries as well about the certificate. So this is a free course. At the same time, we will be issuing a certificate for those who complete the 100% participation. And if you have any doubt or if you have any difficulties of your maybe power failures or the signal failures, you have to log into the YouTube streaming because we have a limited numbers in the Zoom platform up to thousand only. And we have last week as well, we had about thousand, uh, closer to 2000 participants through YouTube as well as the Zoom platform. So what we do is uh, simply we are sending a Google form as an attendance form in a window, which mostly after the, after the course session through YouTube as well as in the Zoom platform in the chat box. If you are to mark your attendance through YouTube, you have to mark it with the link shared in the YouTube, but you have to subscribe to the YouTube channel, then only you have the access to the YouTube chat box. And if you have any difficulties, or if you have any power failures or any sort of technical difficulties, what we recommend is to keep at least some screenshots in the YouTube, or else if you watch later, you can keep those screenshots and prove in demanded by the organizers. Now, products in the keyword theme of YouTube, Saha, Zoom platform, they come about with a kernel, which is in a participant's other hack to what I ready for in Anisa. You can say, Monohari are at a power failure, a signal drop back, a remote theme of your recommend cranny, a peer attendance link, a key one like a marker and hurry to bury unut, like a young piece of window, a catalog, a pack, a lack with a mega display kernel, YouTube chat ticket, Saha, Zoom chat ticket, the came, chat box, the came. If you want to recommend that you can use the screenshots to keep the screenshots. If you want to use the screenshots, you can use the screenshots to use the screenshots. If you want to use the screenshots, you can use the screenshots to use the screenshots. If you want to use the screenshots, you can use the screenshots to use the screenshots. If you want to use the screenshots, you can use the screenshots. सर्टिफिकेट टेकने पर अपने कहाँ रहती बंगा कीपर देने के में सर्टिफिकेट टेकने तो वहाँ पे प्रिंट करना ऑटोमेटिकली एक इट पर्सेंट प्रिंट कर लो ऐड लेबल ने साला सुना लोगे को हेडिया तब एक सेंड करना एक सॉफ्ट कॉपी का कहती है तो हमारी जनरल लेबल ने अवश्य ना हार्ड कॉपी का आज गाने पुलवां कलम Palamu family and Putgala, our Stavala Binakari, first in first serve basis, we open the QA session through Zoom platform. And so today is our third day. We had uh, first two sessions basically on electrical low voltage system. And today we have a special presenter as well as a pres special segment of ELV. Those who are in the industry know what ELV stands for extra low voltage. And as we have discussed and we have seen the flyers, so this is a heavy content. So obviously we cannot 
go through all the segments within just two hours session. So this is a simple introductory session and it could be a knowledge sharing session based on the experience of our presenter. So moving into the presentation today, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on screen today one of a very senior engineer graduated from University of Moratua, namely engineer Jagat Vikramasekar. This gentleman has a huge, I should say, vast experience in mostly design, execution, and even testing and commissioning projects, building projects, particularly in extra low voltage systems, not only in Sri Lanka, and even in foreign context. And to be frank with you, if I personally have any question or any clarification to be sorted out in terms of electric ELV systems. So this gentleman is one of my first choice uh, person to be in touch and make questions. So ladies and gentlemen, you all are privileged to have uh, such a knowledge tank to today as a presenter. And I would like to welcome him without wasting much of a time as we have a lot of content to be covered today. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on screen engineer Jagat Vikram Sekar. Jagat, it's over to you. Thank you very much, Engineer Nalin, um, for the fine introduction. As you clearly said, we have very limited time and a uh, lot of content, a lot of stories to be discussed, especially related to ELV. Uh, ELV stands for, as uh, Engineer Nalin stated, that uh, extra low voltage system, it comprised of so many um, components. And compared to uh, many other uh, electrical and electronic system, yearly system getting uh, changed drastically, maybe annually, maybe every decade, something new is coming. So it is very essential you keep in touch with uh, the system uh, to be in a par with uh, modern changes. So I will be sharing a few aspects of extra low voltage system today. Uh, but however, if you want to <clears throat> get uh, certain things clar cleared or clarified, of course, during the Q&A session, uh, you can post them here. Even though it has not been mentioned during my lecture, it doesn't matter, of course, uh, I, I believe that I, I will be able to help you uh, with my knowledge. So with that, uh, let me share my presentation. I hope you can see the screen now. Can you? Yes, yes, you. please continue. Yeah. The, uh, I have a few titles, of course, uh, Within this particular discussion, discussion topics, uh, these are the topics that we have selected. Of course, under each topic, there are a number of subtopics. So that's why I have not mentioned them. But I will start with CCTV system because it's very close to our day-to-day -day activities in modern culture. If you uh, watch television even nowadays, at least one or two CCTV segments are there. So people are always trying to put up CCTV system in their domestic and uh, commercial application. Even for military application, this has been a mandatory component. So that's why I wanted to start with CCTV system. Uh, now, always it is very good to simplify what we are going to learn. As long as the system remains very simplified, something that is very close to us, of course, uh, grasping it, understanding it becomes automatically very easy. So CCTV system is al almost like that. It is now you have some object that is to be captured, something happening in somewhere, something that you want to capture, and there must be a medium or mechanism to capture it. There must be a medium or mechanism to capture it, and then it has to be traveled to the destination. It has to be taken to the destination. So when you are taking it to the next level, so you will be having different container, different uh, environment, a different configuration when you take it to the point A to point B, and then finally, uh, you put it into the environment where uh, it is expanded and so you can get all the information. So these are the few stages that you would notice if you catch a very ornamental fish and take onto the display tank. So similarly in uh, CCTV systems also, you, you will see an object, something happening that has to be captured by means of a camera. And then there is a way to uh, transport it to the destination. So this is the transport medium. So in, based on the way that you transport it from A to B, we demarcate CCTV system analog or digital, but we don't use the word digital. Instead, we use IP system. And finally, you will have a display through which you can see what is going on. 
So one component that I haven't mentioned here is the recording part. So I will get back to you that. Uh, you can see here I have captured a certain portion of the camera here also in demarcation of uh, IP and analog system because um, the way you capture the image, the technology that you use in terms of capturing the image also defines whether uh, it should be transferred via IP medium or analog medium. So this is the two demarcation. So when it's come to the analog system, you will see an ordinary camera, which is uh, covering the location and plus you are mostly using coaxial cables. This is a standard, but nowadays people use different medium, but the standard has to be coaxial cable. And then you have the centralized device uh, with number of channels. Of course, this contains the recording medium. So that's why it is called digital video recorder, DVR in, uh, in, in the cases. Um, and then finally, we have the display. Uh, displays are mostly connected to the DVR and this keeps on recording all the incident captured by the CCTV camera and finally you will get that if you are using a PTC camera yeah you want to rotate it those all the hardware will also be connected to the centralized device so in in commercial sector I have seen very uh, limited installation in Sri Lanka based on analog systems but when it comes to the domestic application this is the most uh, popular one if you have uh, five, per, let's say seven purchase, ten purchase uh, house, or maybe slightly bigger than that. And look, systems are the most popular, and you can install such system with less than um, 100,000 uh, Sri Lankan rupees. You can get sometimes five cameras or eight cameras, could be, uh, of course, if you are going with eight cameras, the price would be definitely more than uh, 100,000 rupees. But if you are going with four cameras, definitely you can keep the overall cost less than. Uh, or close to 100,000 rupees. But uh, however, there may be certain occasions where even for commercial application, we might have to use uh, analog cameras as well. I will tell you where that would come in. Next thing is the IP option, IP camera option. Now, this is the most uh, popular method in uh, current commercial applications. Even for military application, government application, this is getting very popular due to the inherent advantages that you find in each sector. Now again, I have demarcated all the components here for easy understanding. If you demarcate, if you segregate the system, key component that makes uh, us to, uh, that help us to understand the, the system. Now here again, you will get the IP cameras and then um, you have the displays again, as I told you before. And of course, the storage devices are there, recording devices. And finally, uh, if you get a system, system means you get a lot of component combined together, a lot of component combined together. So there must be a master, there must be a manager. So video management is done by a, another system. Finally, we must have a centralized communicating system uh, where you get all the information exchange in between these devices and uh, travel through this communication medium. Of course, since it's an IP system, we are using local area network uh, or Ethernet for this particular purpose. And remember, CCTV system is specifically for post-processing, so which means if something happened, if an incident happened, you go to the uh, recordings, you go to the existing storage and retrieve it. We rarely expect someone appearing in front of the display when the simultaneously when the incident is happening. So this is very rarely happening. Uh, however, there may be instances where uh, we need, um, we, we, we expect people to be at the display when the incidents are happening for places like airport and high security, military installation, you would get uh, people appearing in front of the display when the incidents are happening. So we, are, we would be seeing the incident real time. But other than that, especially when it comes to the commercial application, maybe in the government applications, even for our domestic and personal application, of course, it's very rarely be uh, someone would be appearing at the display, someone would be staying at the display when things are happening. In that case, post-processing uh, is the most important one. So that's why recording of CCTV system has become number one requirement. Most of the time, if you check the cost component of entire CCTV system system, entire CCTV uh, system BOQ, you will see the storage comprised of uh, the biggest single line cost component because we have to put a lot of effort. So physical appearance of this item will be seen here. You will see the camera and then through the 
category cable, category 5E, category 6. Now the latest thing is a category 6 cable. You will get the uh, cable coming to the centralized medium. That is a switch in this case, of course. Nowadays, cameras are powered by PoE, power over Ethernet, uh, so that you have to use a PoE camera, a PoE switch in the middle. And then you have your displays. Here, of course, you can see video management software. That's the most important part. Other than that, you will see uh, video analytics that is getting very popular in modern context because uh, human, our human attention getting very expensive so that we are delegating certain analysis to video analytics itself. And of course, then the displays are coming in. Uh, here, we are the human are most interacting with. Of course, in between, you have to get a workstation because video signal uh, cannot be converted directly without any intermediate devices because what you are getting out of this one is an uh, Ethernet signal. So, it, by means of an intermediate uh, decoder or workstation, I use the word decoder because decoder would also working as a a video decoding device or workstation has to be there. Nowadays, uh, decoders are getting kind of popular because uh, workstation prices are very expensive in Sri Lanka. Then you get uh, storage. Of course, our prime objective is to use less amount of storage uh, for recording of uh, one month or three months. So we are using various strategies. I will be explaining them later uh, to get the uh, minimized storage space for recording our video and then the camera this is the most important part uh, because then first we have to capture everything perfectly in order to record it and in order in order for us to do any uh, post processing as well camera comprised of key component first thing is the lens and the lens has two points basically one is the uh, focal length and the other one is the aperture so remember the job, key job, main job of the camera is to handle the light, is to control the light, because we do not have control over light in most of the cases because our cameras are pointing to the nature. So in that case, uh, if you do not control light properly, of course the final image that is appearing at the end will be burned, or of course it will not be having the sufficient quality. Most of the time you have seen nowadays uh, without thinking, because people are not thinking this, right? So that most of the uh, CCTV recording that we have are not used of in terms of any legal activities. We are simply seeing few ghosts moving here and there because we haven't thought of the uh, lighting side. So lens, focal length, aperture, aperture, shutter speed, ISO value and resolution are the key thing. But I have seen in Sri Lanka, usually these uh, yellow color parameters are not highly concentrated during, uh, sorry, uh, during their installation. You, have, you, have, you would have seen this. However, people mostly think of a resolution uh, when the cameras are purchased, but resolution plays a very, not that prominent, uh, that prominence in the design. Resolution is not everything, but I have seen in most of the cases, people go for high resolution, but uh, when it comes to the actual installation, that is not the factor. So next thing is that people mostly forget is the uh, focal length. Based on the focal length, you decide the coverage. Now, if you go for a higher focal length, usually CCD camera focal length is start from two millimeter or 2.8 millimeter focal length, and it goes up to sometimes 12 millimeters slightly beyond that. But if you go for a zoom lens, sometimes it would go 20 milli or maybe more than that. But in our ordinary application, in our commercial and ordinary application, we will really need uh, such a large focal length. Our industry within Sri Lanka and most of the commercial, even beyond Sri Lanka, our focal length would be ranging from 2, two millimeter or 2.8 millimeter to 10 to 12 millimeters. Now, why do we have this kind of uh, uh, focal length range? Of course, larger focal length, larger focal length are for longer distance monitoring. Now, here you can see uh, 2.25 millimeter, you can focus something which is far away from your current location. But as you reduce the focal length, gradually you will see the prominence for the object also reducing, but background surrounding information getting increased, surrounding and background information getting 
increase. You can see here in every case. Here also it is same. When you go for a larger focal length, you can focus the object thoroughly. But as you reduce the focal length, uh, you can cover wider area. So this is uh, something very important when you are deciding the focal length. So if you are installing a camera outdoor applications where larger area to be captured, of course you have to go for a lower uh, focal length. But if you are focusing something, let's say you want to cover only a gate, only a passage, then of course you have to go for a larger focal length. But in between also you will get medium scale uh, focal length. That means normal lens, we are called normal lenses. These are called wide angle. Of course, you can see the green color is wide angle. These are tele lenses. Tele means longer. So medium or, or otherwise normal lenses are for basically how you see through your eye. Normal lens means how you see uh, something through your eye. So this is basically good for indoor application because indoor application you are mostly covered with your walls. So you can't say that I have to cover a wide range or I have to cover some specific area. It doesn't work like that. So medium uh, will be the ideal for indoor applications in terms of focal length. At the same time, you would have seen bullet camera and drone camera and PTZ camera. Now, these are, I mean, if you are considering the shape, bullet camera or box camera for use some sort of deterrent effect. Deterrent effect in the sense, uh, it 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 frighten you. Now you, you when you see that camera, you know that you are under somebody's surveillance. You are being observed by a third party. So these cameras are specifically used for military application or some crucial area like car park uh, or maybe government building where the third, where people should feel that they are under surveillance. So prison, uh, military applications, definitely police would should have bullet type camera or box type camera dome type cameras are for with some aesthetic appearance so basically you don't know where the camera is for, uh, focused or oriented however it gives some sort of uh, pleasing appearance when you are using dome camera so reception hall uh, maybe uh, some let's say reception area itself some pleasing office application definitely we have to use dome camera because uh, those places people should not feel that they are under uh, under somebody's surveillance. PTC camera are for further monitoring. Remember, PTC camera are not for install in numbers. I have seen sometimes certain installation uh, they have chosen twenty or twenty five number of PTC camera. When I asked what was the reason, they thought that PTC camera has the more flexibility, so you can. Uh, rotate in here and there. So that particular nature would be disadvantageous for PTC camera itself. So uh, this is for further analysis only, further uh, references only, but not for installing numbers. And next thing, most popular parameter, of course, there are a lot of parameters. If you take a data sheet of a CCTV camera, there are a number of parameters to be uh, discussed. But of course, uh, since the limitation of time, I'm not going to discuss those all. However, if you have issue, Please let me know. I will be helping. Uh, D, uh, WDR means wide dynamic range. Of course, uh, C, one CCTV camera cannot ca capture light variation that is appearing in the photograph. You know, sometimes in certain part of the background, you will see bright light. Certain area will have a very low light. But the camera should be capable of capturing those soul with the same appearance. Otherwise, uh, you know, if, if you adjust camera for bright light, of course, area with the lower light will not be appearing properly. And if you increase the camera sensitivity so that it can capture the area where the low light level is there, of course, areas with the high light where the bright light is there will be burned. So how camera balance these two area would be addressed under WDR. So when you're buying the camera, if, uh, if you can buy the camera with uh, higher WDR range, of course, those are the camera would be very much suitable for application. Next thing, please remember, lighting plays a bigger role. Now, this is the factor that we forget in most of the application when the CCTVs are installed, the light quality. Uh, if you do not have any control over light, of course, you have to choose the camera with the required property. But if you have the control over light, 
please change it. Then only because rather than complaining that the camera is not producing proper images, you have to address the concern. Uh, mostly it is lighting. So you have to improve the lighting condition after discussing with the people. So, and next thing is the, uh, you would have seen this uh, day and night camera, uh, day and night camera with color feature, IR camera, thermal camera. And of course you have to provide lighting as I told you before. So these are the uh, option coming with the camera. Day and night camera, we are using near IR, which means the uh, surrounding will have some sort of uh, thermal properties until it gets fully cold during the night time. So during that period, uh, still the camera can generate images. Those are called, uh, such cameras are called uh, day and night camera. Of course, some cameras are having the capability to produce the color also. IR camera in which you get IR gun, IR LEDs mounted in the camera and they are generating IR infrared. Reflection will be captured by the camera. Thermal camera, we are using thermal images, body heat for image processing. And next thing is the uh, Irish. Usually we don't uh, put too much attention on this case here. Basically we are controlling the uh, light amount coming in. Especially if you are installing a camera in outdoor application, you have to fully think of aperture condition or the iris and the aperture because that defines the amount of light coming in. Uh, there are two options in iris controlling. One is auto iris, which means DC iris. Other one is P iris. P iris means precise. P stands for precise. Precise iris. Nowadays, uh, we recommend you to go with the iris controlling. If you are going with Automatic iris controlling, please go with iris. That is mentioned here. So you can uh, go through this material later and check. Next thing is the image sensor. Now, this is where the image is finally captured. So based on the number of pixels, you will decide uh, how sharp your image. Uh, even you can uh, zoom it in or zoom out since you have higher resolution. Nowadays, CCD, CCD sensors are not that much available. Instead, we see the CMOS uh, sensors as the uh, image sensor. So image sensor basically defines the resolution, which means number of pixels available and the color depth. Uh, color depth means how many colors you can capture. Because in red color, how many shades you can get. In blue color, how many shades of blue can be captured, yellow color, how many shades possible. So this factor defined in terms of color, how quality your image is. Now for an example, YouTube images that probably one few of you are watching right now has eight bit color day. So then total color that YouTube image can produce equal to two to the power eight multiplied by two to the power eight multiplied by two to the power eight. Those are the four colors, three colors available. So that number of colors can be produced in uh, YouTube videos. Next thing is the aspect ratio. Aspect ratio means the number of pixel available horizontal line, number of pixel available in the vertical line. So uh, usually the aspect ratio nowadays is 16 to 9 or 9 to 16. So uh, in terms of resolution, nowadays most popular is megapixel range. Uh, 2 megapixel, 4 megapixel would be the most popular. However, cameras are being manufactured by certain manufacturer with 4K resolution. 4K in the sense you will have four, almost 4,000 pixel horizontally. So its exact number is 3,840. So sometimes we will get 8K also in certain application, but I haven't seen 8K camera in Sri Lanka yet. I don't know whether it's available or not. Uh, then you get close to uh, 8,000 pixel horizontally. But of course, they are generating massive images, so it will not be uh, sustainable in certain cases. So aspect ratio, as I told you, even when you are paying attention, when you watch movies, you would have seen nowadays movies are a lot, there are a lot of events happening in one territory, especially uh, some, if something is happening in the, uh, in the uh, desert. So you will you you have a lot of information horizontally. Even people are more focused on horizontal information. So that's why compared to uh, four to three resolution that we used to work uh, in old television and movies, nowadays uh, we are seeing sixteen to nine. So 
So when you are fixing a camera, you have to ensure that if you go with 16 to 9 resolution, of course, you will get a lot of unnecessary information here. You can see we have covered walls. We, we, we haven't got information here. But if you change the aspect ratio 9 to 16, of course, uh, additional information can be seen. So the color depth, uh, as I told you, 8-bit, uh, you will see some gradients. But if you go for a higher uh, bit color depth, you will see smooth color transition in between. So it is further explained here. And the, you know, with this all, it is very difficult for you to choose the camera. So that's why all the manufacturers have produced their own software in terms of selecting the camera, in which you can see at what level uh, you know you can place your face in certain places and you can detect whether you are being seen properly or not. So that is related to the still image, but when it comes to the video images, I hope nowadays you can see this, uh, especially um, decision review system in cricket also, you, you would have seen uh, the third umpire goes uh, frame by frame analysis, uh, especially in LBW or any, any incident happened, he needs uh, frame by frame analysis. So that is video signal. So higher the frames, higher the accuracy you can detect because when that incident happened, if the frame is not available, of course, you can't get the clear understanding of the incident. So that's why the number of frames per second is more important uh, in terms of video signaling. So that's why you would see a higher number of frames uh, with the various action here can be seen uh, in two different video streams. So how many frames generated per second? Now the video signal, uh, some uh, video signal transmission. Now you would have seen most of the time in uh, local uh, furnitures being delivered, not as the furniture now. Of course, in uh, maybe Tamro and many places, they make it first and then uh, the segregated into few component and they pack it and uh, put into the vehicle and take them into the destination. Uh, reassemble it. So similarly, video signal, we can do this method because if you send it like that, of course, it consumes more space. So instead, you dismantle them and put it into a smaller box. But most important th thing here is that instruction sheet. You have to have an instruction sheet at the end. Otherwise, people will not be able to reassemble it. So similarly, a video signal can also be compressed in similar manner. However, there are two aspects. One thing is intra-compression, which means you have to first compress the image internally within the image, as well as you compare two video images together, and then unnecessary data will be removed. So that is called intra-compression and inter-compression. Intra-compression and inter-compression. Uh, popular intra-compressions are joint picture uh, expert group, which means JPEG images. I hope you would have worked now numerous times. Um, and then intra-compression includes motion picture expert group, and uh, this is MPEG uh, H.264 and MPEG-4. Now I have seen mostly, uh, especially this is a free video compression technology. MPEG-4 is a video compression technology, but it is freely available. I have seen uh, mostly dialogue videos are being uh, broadcast via MPEG-4 part 10, but uh, most advanced method is H.264 and H.265. Those are licensed uh, compression technologies uh, for which you have to pay. Now, as you can see here, now here, this intra compression, if you consider this intra compression here, less things to be compressed because image is not cluttered. But here, there are a lot of changes, a lot of shapes and shades are there. Those all should be stored. So, obviously, you can see this image will be very heavy compared to the image with uh, less information. Similarly, video signals also, if you see certain things are steady, the, those videos should not be transferred because there is no any change there. Only the moving object will be transferred. So that's why uh, video signal mostly you get initial stationary information. Of course, this background will remain stationary, but moving object that this person is the one only thing which is moving, but rest of the images, only movement will be transferred. However, we can't rely uh, on uh, one image. Now, in this case, we call this uh, the complete image is image. The rest of the changes are called predictive images. Those are called P frames. These are called I frames. But we can't rely on only one I frame. 
because if that is distorted in the middle of the transmission, of course, the entire video stream will get disrupted. So that's why uh, we have to send some eye images in between. It, the distance between um, two eye images is called GOV, group of videos. So as I told you, most advanced method is uh, H.264. So next time when you are choosing your camera, you have to go with uh, advanced compression technologies. So various CCD camera types are there. So based on your application, you have to choose the most suitable one. Then the storage. How now we have covered the camera, and then we have to think of the storage. Now in the storage, again, uh, it is very easy to do the calculation. Uh, if you take uh, the frame size of one image and multiply it by number of images generated by a second, and then multiply by a number of seconds in a month. So accordingly, you can calculate the uh, total storage taken. But the problem is, if you are going with, uh, uh, let's say, inter intra compression and inter compression, of course, uh, it is not that easy to calculate manually. So that's why we have to, because in that case, all the stationary object will not be transferred. Only the moving object will be transferred. So in that case, uh, it is very difficult to do the calculation manually if you go with inter uh, compression. So in that case, we have to get some help from the software. So you can see here, if you go with motion JPEG, this is the storage number of uh, gigabytes generated per day. Now, motion JPEG has less compression strategies compared to H.264 and H.265. So in this case, you can see every uh, scenario, almost uh, similar condition, uh, five frames per second, 12, 24, and 30. Of course, with motion JPEG, it generates more space, more uh, high volume of video compared to the H.264. So storage technologies uh, are, you can do server-based storages in which uh, you have to have servers for recording purpose. NAS are very popular, a stack of hard disks. However, I told you uh, NAS together with NVR, sorry, together with VMS software, I told you there must be a software to control the whole thing. If you buy the NAS with a software that is called NVR, uh, nowadays most popular, we, we don't like to have so many hardware in our domestic or commercial application. The most popular method is going for cloud. But the problem is in Sri Lanka still uh, cloud may be a little expensive. Annual charge would go up to, uh, let's say, 60,000 per month uh, for 100 cameras. So that's the usual rate. But if you have the potential to negotiate, you can decide, right? SAN is another storaging method. Uh, only limited people I have seen uh, using a SAN application. Um, but here, one advantage is uh, SAN stand, stand for storage area network. This is more advanced, especially these things are used for banking application, I have seen, because for the high availability. In airport, I think uh, they are using a SAN for uh, recording. Next thing is the redundancy. It's not always the recording. Uh, the way you, the method of recording is something, but you have to have the redundancy, which means due to some reason, if one hard disk or set of hard disk fails, you must have some sort of mechanism to recover and retrieve the data. For which, uh, internationally, there are a few uh, methods have been introduced. One is redundant array of independent disk. This is called RAID. Most popular in CCTV is the RAID 5 application. So in which you can uh, use more hard disk space, but it also provides redundancy as well. The RAID 5 is the most uh, popular one in terms of the redundancy. Because it uses this XOR table. Uh, if anybody wants any further information, please get back to me separately. Then next thing is the display. Now we capture them all here, we store here, but of course we need to see them as well. So displays, again, people, I haven't seen a, that much attention, put their huge attention in terms of selecting uh, displays. But again, I believe, uh, because I believe it plays a prominent role because it runs 24 hours. So power consumption would be really high if you use low-grade uh, displays. 
nowadays uh, we don't use crt we don't use lcd but very popular is led again we have qled oled micro led things like that these are this is the most popular type uh, and in terms of resolution you will get hd tv 4k and 8k displays are also there connection would range in from hdmi to vga both are being used in uh, modern context again if you capture the image with certain color availability of course you must be able to display with the same color availability so that why right, uh, color depth is very important and uh, recording stop one and, second uh, one second okay, okay. Right. Okay. and uh mr Jagat, just to make a small reminder about that once you're moving from segment to segment please make two minutes of uh Single briefing as well. Uh, right. Uh, after uh, now, CCTV portion, I am about to finish. As soon as CCTV portion is done, I will quickly go through uh, the whole thing in single. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, displays again. Uh, I mean, this is like purchasing a television. Uh, it is not engineering. Even for your domestic application, when you are buying a television, these things should be thought of. Uh, bracket again uh, nowadays you know i used to buy bracket in uh, 2000 5000 but nowadays bracket prices have gone up to 10000 12000 so that is also very important because finally finally let's see uh, if the person who is looking at the display has to place their head in in very painful gesture those people will not be happy to use the cctv system for long term uh, since uh, bracket plays another important role uh, when you are doing uh, when you are doing your CCTV installation. LCD, as you all know, there is a very bright light at the rear side of the screen. Any LCD screen, you will see a very bright. Uh, I'm not going to talk about CRT. Very bright light, and these uh, pixels uh, works as a switches. These are digital switches. So based on the opening and closing, you will see the color in LCD. So this is very popular in modern case. But QLED, only advantage with QLED is this, uh, I think when you are buying a television also, you will see nowadays QLED televisions are also there. This, if, if you do not have sufficient color quality in the bright backlight, the sufficient brightness and the color quality, of course, the images will not have that quality of, uh, at the end. So as a result, and they are using this quantum technologies to improve the lighting quality, the quality of the light, color quality of the light. So that's the advantage with QLED, but of course, these are very expensive devices in the market. Most expensive is the OLED. OLED doesn't have any backlight. Uh, it, it is a simply an array of LEDs. So they are getting illuminated in, uh, as it, it is needed. So again, you can go with 4K and 8K application with these old application. Uh, OLED is the most expensive one, but one good thing is compared to uh, QLED and um, LCDs or LEDs, uh, the real black color can be seen in OLED because in either cases, you have some backlight. So sometimes this white color could be leaking through the small spaces. So the, you will not see proper black light, but in OLED, of course, uh, if you have a chance, please visit the showrooms in Sri Lanka, you will see the real uh, black color in OLED uh, display. Again, color depth, I hope I don't want to explain you. You already know what the meaning of color depth is. So that should also be thought of when you are selecting this. Contrast, again, very important thing, as I told you. Uh, this is related to the black color, The the brightest color to the smallest bright color available, the ratio. Basically, uh, black color versus white color. Remember, always, even though you see it as a black color, it's not real black. There may be some light appearing. The brackets, various brackets are there. When you are choosing the brackets, you have to ensure the number, degree of uh, variation, degree of movements, how many sides rotation can be made. Now, this is one of my installation in a prominent building in Sri Lanka. I think we installed almost uh, 200 cameras, sorry, 150 cameras in that installation. This is something I took from uh, internet. You can see the camera ori the display orientation has been adjusted so that people will not be having any pain. 
and at the same time you have few displays and monitors in front of you for further analysis this is again uh, one installation that i did in colombo uh, how the display should be placed it should look nice end of the day right so finally uh, storage and the uh, uh, video management software of course end of the day you have to have a software to control this all that is called vms or video management software it does all the administrative and operational function very popular vms i'm not promoting anything but here uh, most prominent that we have used uh, milestone uh, exxon soft genetic and exact genetic is uk product milestone is a netherland product so those are very popular in sri lankan country but as i told you unfortunately i can't put more time here uh, video analytics plays a very big role uh, in modern case because uh, human attention human hours human time getting very expensive so that we are trying to delegate most of the analysis to another software that's where the video analytics are coming in but of course they are very expensive you have to put some uh, effort uh, on uh, configuring them as well as purchasing them they will not be available in free of that okay um, let me explain few things in uh, singhal also now i will go to this metanama me mekama use karanna api ogolo hari camera wa thora ganime di hondara madaka tiya ganda camera wak tiyenne aaloke hasuru wimata eka tiyenne aaloke den aaloke nathan camera wak weda karanna den aaloke nathi thana camera wak install kala wedak na koi hari aaloke at tiyenne one aaloke control karanna api langa tiyena lens eka kaache e kaache focal length eka nawa kaache kada thana parameters dekak thiyena kaache diameter eka kochchara lokuda kiyen eka sa eka tiyena focal length eka me hari kama lens eka thiyen bala pohama paint da tiyenne डिशन අපිට කොච්චර දුරට ඩීටේල්ස් ඕනේද කියන එක. නැත්තම් මේ කවරරි මාකට් එකේ කියලා විකුණාට මගේ 5 මෙගාපික්සල් 6 මෙගාපික්සල් කියනවා කොහොමද? නැත්තම් මෙච්චර අවශ්‍ය වෙන්නේ අපේ සමහර ඇප්ලිකේෂන්ස් වලට. ඒ කැමරාවක් සිලෙක්ට් කරද්දි ඊළඟට රෙකෝඩින් කියන එකේදී අපි දන්නවා මේ රෙකෝඩ් කරන එකේ රිඩන්ඩන්සි කියන එක හරි වැදගත්. ඒ කියන්නේ අපි රෙකෝඩ් කරලා තිබ්බ වුණාට ඒක බැල්ලා කතා හිතන මොන හරි දෙයක් ඩැමේජ් වෙලා ඒ රෙකෝඩින්ස් නැති වුණොත් එහෙම අපිට ඒක යූස් කරන්න බැරි වෙනවා. මොකද CCTV සිස්ටම් වල ප්‍රධානම අර මුඛ්‍ය පරමාර්ථ දේ වෙන්නේ ඇත්තටම පෝස්ට් ප්‍රොසෙසින්. ඒ කියන්නේ දෙයක් වුණාට පස්සේ අපි ගිහිල්ලා දෙන්න බලනවා මොකද වුණේ කියලා. රියල් ටයිම් මොනිටරින් හරි අඩුවෙන් කරන්නේ අපි සීසීටිවි සිස්ටම්ස් වල. එහෙම වෙන තැනුත් තියෙනවා උදාහරණයක් විදිහට එයාපෝට් ආම් කැම්ප් වගේ දේවල් වල සමහර වෙලාවට අපි රියල් ටයිම් මොනිටරින් උත් කරනවා. ස්පෙෂලි එයාපෝට් වල ගොඩක් වෙලාවට රියල් ටයිම් මොනිටරින් තමයි ඒගොල්ලෝ ගොඩක් වෙලාවට දන්නේ. මොන හරි දෙයක් වුණාම ඔෆ් කෝස් පෝස්ට් ප්‍රොසෙසින් පාට් එක අවශ්‍යයි. ඊළඟට ඩිස්ප්ලේ කියන එකත් හරි වැදගත්. ඩිස්ප්ලේ වල ටෙක්නොලොජිස් කීපයක් තියෙනවා. ब्राइट एक मगहर लियानवादारे ओपनो श्रीलंका 
එතකොට එයාලගේ කැමරා එක එක බ්‍රෑන්ඩ් එකක් ගන්නවා ඒගොල්ලෝ එතකොට සොෆ්ට්වෙයා එක තව හොඳම ලෝකෙට ඉන්න හොඳම සොෆ්ට්වෙයා එකක් ගන්නවා ඊළඟට මෙයා ස්ටෝරේජ් එක තව හොඳ බ්‍රෑන්ඩ් එකකින් අරගෙන ඒගොල්ලෝ හොඳ සිස්ටම් එකක් කම්පියර් කරනවා නැත්නම් ඒ චාන්ස් එක තියෙනවා ඒ වගේ වෙලාවට අපි ඕපන් සිස්ටම් වලට ගියා. ඉතින් ගොඩක් පොපියුලර් ඇතර මම යූස් කරලා තියෙන මයිල්ස්ටෝන් වගේ සොෆ්ට්වෙයා එක ඒක ගොඩක් පොපියුලර් නමුත් ඊට අමතරව මේ ඔය එක්සැක්ට් වගේ සොෆ්ට්වෙයාස් උත් අවේලබල් වෙලා තියෙනවා මාකට් එකේ. ඒක තමයි මේ දල වශයෙන් අපිට CCD සම්බන්ධව කතා කරන්න තියෙන ඔයගොල්ලෝ සිස්ටම් එකක් කරලා දෙකක් තේරෙනවා නැති මේ හැම පැත්තක්ම හිතන්න ඕනේ කියලා. ඒ වගේ නෙමෙයි. මම මේක දැන් මැද පාට් එක කතා කරේ නැහැ. මම මේක කෙලින්ම ICT එක ගැන කතා කරද්දි කියලා දෙන්න වෙනවා. ඊළඟට අපි වැදගත්ම දේ තමයි මේ ඇක්සස් කන්ට්‍රෝල් එක. ඇක්සස් කන්ට්‍රෝල් වල අද කාලේ ගොඩාක් පොපියුලර් වේ ගන්න මම දැකලා තියෙනවා. දැන් CCTV වලයි අපි ඇක්සස් කන්ට්‍රෝල් වලට ආවා. දැන් අපි ඒක ඇති. ඒක Uh, now I am going to talk about access control system. Remember, uh, even yesterday or day before yesterday, I got a call uh, regarding access control system in a prominent uh, factory in Colombo. The biggest problem with access control system in Sri Lanka is you are using very old technology. Plus, you don't think of the user convenience. Now, you would have seen White House would be the one of the most protected places in the planet right now. But do you see so many security devices moving here and there? No, but they know where you are. If you get into the place like that, even your footsteps being captured by the system. With minimum, minimum user inconvenience, with minimum user inconvenience, the whole place is protected. Whole place is protected. So that is how a security system should be designed. Otherwise, you know, you can ask the person to bring your birth certificate, your grammar service certificate. that certificate police certificate and then the security clearance can be provided nothing will happen but nobody will visit your place in that case so the user convenience is a number one priority uh, in deciding uh, access control system always remember that uh, so you know you put all the protection but then nobody will come to your place so this is how uh, an ordinary key system works Uh, you have your key and the internal barrel is there. If you put the wrong key, the barrel will not rotate. Why? They are at different height. But if you put the correct key with the correct contour, you can see all the barrels are aligned. So when you rotate it, uh, you can open the uh, lock. So the shape is the most important part. Now you can see here uh, more. when you get very complex contour of course that key would be the most secure one compared to the less complexity now this key cannot be duplicated very difficult to duplicate compared to this key so though, that is when it come to the ordinary uh, manual arrangement but how this happen in in electronic uh, access control system so few things are there first thing is the reader reader is the first contact point They, this is where you give your credential credential means uh, something it could be your fingerprint or maybe the card that you carry or maybe if you are going with retina scanning your eye your voice could be a credential something that you know something that you have would be uh, or you are would be a credential so this is captured by the reader and that has to be transferred to the controller then the controller will take the decision whether you are allowed or not that decision will be passed to the uh, final locking device then the place will be open so basically three segment could be say identification deciding and uh, allowing however if if you see this clear demarcation of these three areas we call is three layer architecture access control three layer architecture if you see anything combines together any two combines together of course we can so See only two layer architecture. Two layer architectures are not that secure. Just imagine the security guard who is the person making the decision. Also, sometimes if you kidnap that person, if you threat that person, threaten that person, of course he would also give the decision to get in there. So that's why you get a less uh, powerful person at the initial reception, and he goes to to the internal office and asks whether this person should be allowed on. and then he the final officer indo officer who is sitting indo will give will give the decision yes that person is allowed then only he come out and allow you to get into the place 
So this three layer architecture and two layer architecture, are in, in, again in, in, in Sri Lankan context also, I have seen uh, people don't uh, pay too much attention on this case because they have to go with the prices. But three layer architecture is the uh, most uh, prominent and uh, accepted standard in the world right now. Certain product, I will be using some brand name, but please remember I'm not promoting anything, but just for your understanding, I am telling this. Uh, product like Bosch uh, will never produce any product under two layer architecture. They are, if you ask even two layer architecture product, they don't have, they only have the three layer architecture. And again, uh, in, this, in this particular place, readers are manufactured by certain organization, controllers are by certain organization, uh, locking devices are from another organization. It's very rare that you get all these three sites from the one organization. Now, for an example, Bosch doesn't have locking devices. You have to buy it from a third party. They are fully uh, expert in controlling devices. Even reader has to be taken from another party. HID company, again, I'm not promoting any brand, US brand. They are really good at manufacturing readers, but they are not in controller market. Of course, they don't do the looking device. You have to buy it from another part. So uh, that is what I explained this two layer architecture. The component wise, this is how they are being seen. Uh, this is a reader, controller, and the looking devices. Now here, this is the normal arrangement. And remember, if you see any uh, barrier gates, um, uh, these kind of uh, access control arrangement, uh, all works on the same principle. You, you don't have to go for another classes or learning for learning about these kind of access control system. It also works on the very same principle. Now, these are the components. You can read them later. And readers, of course, uh, use for covering your, for getting your uh, credentials. One prominent credential that we have right now is due to COVID issues and all people don't like to touch anything. So RFID. Uh, plays a very big role. Now here uh, you don't, everything happens in a radio frequency medium. RFID stands for radio frequency identification. It has very short range as well as very long range for vehicle detection. You Once you paste this sticker on the windscreen, of course, even for a, for, from a distance also, these things will be captured. So door can be open automatically, especially VIP entrance, we do this. And next thing is the identification number. Every card, every every person will have a number assigned, right? So in this case, even in our case also, ID card number is the most important thing. So that number, even in card also, you have this ID number stored in there. So that will work as a uh, key for your identification. It will have to... Uh, Portion one is called facility called an ID number, but those things we'll discuss later if you want to analyze it further. And it is called CSN number, uh, card serial number. So this, this is like your ID number. So under that number, all your information are there. Uh, that is the number basically we transfer in between, right? Between reader and the uh, card. So these are the locking mechanism. Each has its own advantages and disadvantages. Uh, these are some other devices, flap barriers. Likewise, we have uh, devices. And at the same time, you have to detect whether door is closed or not, for which we are using some limit switches to detect the position of the door. And of course, once you get into the place, of course, you should get out of the place for which we are using uh, exit buttons. Sometimes you would have seen uh, some uh, uh, ultrasonic related PRI sensor based systems also in which when you are uh, coming closer to the door, it opens automatically. And of course the controller, this is where the decision is made to which you would connect your reader and uh, based on the credential information received by the control, it makes the decision whether it should be open or not. So this is the brain of the whole thing. This would be connected to the central system via local area network. And the normal appearance would be something like this. Uh, next thing is now when now you have stored something here. Now, if it is freely available, if somebody can capture that them, of course, again, your privacy 
and uh, the uh, security of course if, if somebody can capture your information and everything of course uh, that system is no use hence we have to store the data in most secure manner in this card that is where the encryption technologies are coming in we have to store the data in most secure manner encrypting then encrypted data will be transferred nowadays this this plays a very big role in modern world also uh, you know that um, when we do banking now we rarely visit uh, physical banks we do everything through online medium we are using uh, the software or the web page or the portal given by the bank and we have somewhat security there so how this is done these things have been made easy by a lot of encryption technologies there are a lot of stories of course uh, we don't have time of course when you are using whatsapp also you will see that the end to end encryption is enabled which means no third party can retrieve your information almost all the uh, encryption involves two things one is the algorithm other one is the key algorithm and key i will quickly tell you what this algorithm and key means now here uh, of course this word doesn't have any meaning this word doesn't have any meaning but if you uh, go uh, two letters forward yeah two letters forward j uh, before that and the letter before next letter would be h so if you do the processing for the rest of the letters also you will end up with the word hello two letters forward forward yeah, yeah. two letters forward so then you will you will get h here you will get e uh, in uh, in double n means actually l o means q right so then you 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 can come up with this uh, particular word the real word that this person wants to translate so here this particular order okay go forward two letters go backward two letters that particular arrangement between two party is called algorithm encrypting algorithm and the number of letters that you should go backward and forward define the key so this algorithm and the key should be same if you are decrypting any message now since you have same symmetric arrangement in both case these are called symmetric keys but of course this has very less security less secret and you two should meet at very beginning also to decide this algorithm and the key but uh, this is not you no know, this cannot be used for very complex application especially if you are using banking application you can't meet you have to have some sort of encryption mechanism without meeting that is where the asymmetric encryption comes in so in the latter part of the slide if time permits i will be showing you how uh, asymmetric um, encryption works next thing is the uh, cable communication this is another thing that i have to mention here so reader will capture something and that has to be transferred to the reader sorry to the controller so there are a few method one method is called vgan method or vgan it is also called as vgan it doesn't matter vgan vgan or rs485 other method is ethernet those are the three method used in the industry for transferring data from here to here because in um, in most of the cases if you are dealing with things like fingerprint of course these two protocol will not be sufficient they will not be carrying that large amount of data in this case we are using ethernet so uh, vgan this is how it works you have to use at least two cable one cable for zero transmission other cable for ones so ones and zeros are separated in vgan application uh, rs485 actually rs485 the medium the protocol is osdp open supervised device protocol very popular in uh, access control application almost all the application nowadays runs on this one but vgan is also there um, in my case i am always trying to use uh, osdp because that's the advanced method osdp so one advantage is vgan of course it's a peer to peer communication uh, but uh, osdp you can have something like this uh, network can be adjusted ethernet of course you know uh, you can uh, connect reader directly to the ethernet local area network as well as now wireless technologies are widely being used uh, wifi can be used bluetooth zigbee and z wave uh, zigbee and z waves are basically 
coming under IoT application. If you want to have your door lock at the household application connected to your mobile phone, we use Zigbee and Zbee. We are using IoT door locks. In modern case, we are using uh, Zigbee and Zbee. And next thing is the credentials. Now, in order to open a door, you have to have a key in uh, normal cases, but uh, in uh, access control with RFID or some other technologies, you have to use some sort of a credential. Earlier days, we used magnetic card, then we got proximity card, smart card, Bluetooth, modern ways, use of mobile phone, getting very popular. I have seen so many people store their data within the uh, mobile phone and it is used as a uh, credential for getting into a building. There are a lot of uh, practical applications and a lot of stories which I can share, but let's see in the future, if we are to meet again, uh, I'll be sharing those stories. Uh, proximity card works on 125 frequency. Uh, my personal limitation is not to use this. This is very old technology and there is no any uh, security in 125 uh, frequency. That would lead to so many problems. I have seen even some very prominent organization have used this 125 frequency and um, no, no security at all. Uh, instead, we have to go with 13.56 megahertz. This is the uh, most uh, advanced smart card application that we have right now 13.56 megahertz which means the frequency or the uh, communication between these two taken place in this frequency now again uh, we have to uh, encrypt the data now i told you i will be coming again uh, again this is a very interesting part there is a very advanced subject called uh, cryptography how to you know, cipher, ciphering means, you know, encrypting a message so that nobody can break it. There are a lot of films even, even the Second World War, there was a wonderful story in uh, deciphering or decrypting German espionage, right? How they, uh, the frequencies and everything they use for transferring data between their information, between their forces. This was broken by you know, uh, UK engineers. I hope you have watched that particular movie. So there are a few, a few methods of uh, decrypting uh, or encrypting information. One is uh, data encryption version, DES, uh, advanced encryption. I think in USA, whenever you are sending any information between government institution, you have to use this encryption method so that people can't uh, decrypt it. And RSA, uh, public encryption, those are the methods. Earlier days, we use uh, Caesar cipher. Actually, when Caesar wants to distribute information among his army, so that only the soldiers of his army can read the message, hidden message, he used uh, Caesar cipher. It's very easy. Uh, algorithm was uh, similar to that. You were simply shifting backward and forward. So again, you can see algorithm and key there. So we they were given uh, key and the algorithm separately, and the people could. Uh, decrypt the message. I have in this crypto one, uh, mostly in uh, Chinese product, I have seen this encryption method. And RSA, this is another method, but this is slightly slow. But still, I can see certain banks and all using this uh, RSA method. DES, uh, widely used uh, in modern uh, access control application. And message here. Ah, yeah. Movie name, image and game, yeah. <laughs> Good. How can, ah, yeah. Uh, and uh, advanced encryption standard is also there. I think uh, I'm using another bank name here. Uh, Sampath Bank uses this method for their in information encryption. This is a, this this is very fast. It doesn't need very lengthy keys. Uh, and uh, Diffie and Holman, these people were pioneer in uh, encrypting data. Uh, now, I will quickly tell you because this is an interesting thing. Uh, now, if you see this, this final colors, these two, I'm sorry I, if I take too much time. Uh, final colors, of course, by looking at the final color, you can't say the constituting colors. Now, here, how this color was made, of course, you can't say. But let's say you first agree two color, A and B agrees two color, and you random initial this agreement is there. So, we'll start with yellow color. 
and you randomly decide okay this is my color i just decide okay let's take red today and this guy decide it's a random color nobody knows what this only you and then you combine these two colors and the mixed choice into the other side mixed choice into the other side here also you do the same you combine these two color and mixed choice into the other side and once you get the mixture once you get the mixture you add add it with your previous color now because you 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 got this combination here see uh, yellow and red mix you get this color and that color is mixed with your color initial color and then you get this color similar thing is done by the other guy so you you are uh, this this yellow and uh, i think lightly green combined makes this color and it is mixed with your color finally you get color but end of the day you see both parties have combined the same colors see both parties have combined the same color at the end of the day see here when you get this both parties this color and this color and this color these three colors but different instant here these two color and this color so somehow in at the different stage the color the order was different but end of the day you got the same color so mathematically this this can be done by the calculation called mod calculation mod calculation you know the remaining number 5 divided by 2 mod 5 divided by 2 means 3 at the same time you can get uh, 13 divided by 10 mod calculation of 13 divided by 10 is also the 3 so but you, even though you have same mod you you don't know what was the initial number used for initial calculation so mod calculation is used for uh lot uh, in 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 great extent for encrypting the messages so this is again uh, you know to detect uh, you are not a robot um, that is also another method detecting whether you are a human or not i will tell it bit later uh then you know now we discuss lot of things uh, encrypting and uh, detection those things so one person can't do those all you know we if he wants to install a cct uh, access control system there are some organization in the world they are good at combining this all the encryption method into one piece of paper one piece of uh, plastic card and they uh, sorry one piece of ic and they sell it one company is called nxp in uh, in netherlands they combine this all the encryption method together and then they produce the card so if you want higher level of encryption you simply go to these people and buy their cards so few encryption method currently available is myfair decifier ev1 ev2 ev3 this is the most advanced one right now i think ev4 has also been revealed this is from one organization hid also has hid company called hid has uh, their own product that is called i class i class and myfair are the leading uh, product in terms of producing uh, card with encrypted data uh, Felica is a Japanese product uh, that is also available, especially in Asian region, Indonesia and uh, Vietnam. In those countries, you will find uh, these technologies. So Japan is the country who is manufacturing this. Mobile credential, of course, your mobile phone can be used as a credential, in which, of course, your phone should facilitate any any near field communication. Near, sorry about this letter. Near field coming NFC. It has to be NFC, yeah, not NCF. Near field communication. Again, this runs on 13.5 megahertz, uh, but the di distance would be very less. Uh, then, once you store everything in uh, in into the phone, and as long as it, is, it has this uh, NFC interface, you can use your mobile phone as the credential. Bluetooth can also be used for the same application. One advantage is Bluetooth is even uh, for a somewhat longer distance. bluetooth can be used sometime it could be 10 meter so you know, when you are getting closer to the door uh, when you are getting closer to the door also uh, yeah uh, you can uh, the door will aut automatically be open okay. and here also you can see the normal arrangement uh, you will produce your credential to the reader and reader will transfer that information to the controller and uh, controller sometime has to pass that information to the central device and then finally uh, decision would be taken by the central device 
so will be open. It, it will give the command to the hardware. Right. Uh, verification is two types. Now, when, when the decision is made, you have to do a verification. So verification twofold, one is called one-to-one -one verification, other one is one-to-n verification. One-to-one -one verification means, now sometimes you would have seen a uh, 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 security person would ask you ID and he will check your ID number. First, he will ask your name and then he will ask something to prove it. Okay, give me your ID. Then he will ask your name and you have to produce something to prove it. So, but security person doesn't have any record of yours. He will never keep any record. He doesn't have any record. You will say your name and you are producing some sort of a credential to prove it. So that is called one-to-one -one verification where you don't have any database at the other end. This is improves your privacy. Especially this is the most popular method in European countries where the privacy plays a very big role. One to N verification, of course, as the name itself implies, has a database at the uh, other end. So once you give your data, it, the system goes to the existing database and check whether you are allowed or not. Mm. Next thing, uh, yeah, uh, uh, one to N verification. And almost all the system, and thank you very much, somebody remind me the name, uh, turnstile and these barrier gates and everything works on the very same principle. A uh, special note, uh, anti-pass uh, back, uh, this allows, uh, sometimes you would have seen some only one person buys the ticket, entire family get into the place. So in this case, a lot of access control applications are there, but unfortunately I have added only limited stuff here due to the time restrictions. Uh, yeah, here one, the system will detect if the card is used two times. And uh, regional anti uh, passback means uh, you have to get into get into the place through the standard door to use other doors. If you try to get into the this place for the very first time and try to use open the doors, it will not work. So when you are getting into the place, you have to use the particular door first, and then the rest of the doors uh, will work accordingly. And uh, this is a man trap. Uh, this actually, I have installed number of man traps in Sri Lanka. Number sorry, I mean not that numbers. In one uh, embassy application, uh, I had to do that. Um, now here, the important thing is oh, only one door will remain open when you are getting into the place. Only one door will remain open. Uh, other should, I mean, when you are now, let's say you get into this door. When you are opening this door the door number one should remain closed. And you are here now, and in order to open the door number one, you have to close the door number two, or, or you have to wait until the door number two is closed. And then only door number will door number one will be open. So initially in this particular place also, we had some problem because initially they were not explaining this properly. So we had to do a small uh, you know, circuitry uh, to get this application uh, executed. Then it once it was approved, we had to do the remaining wiring afterwards, and it worked well. Certain standard applied for uh, access control system, so you can go through this later. Uh, there are a lot of standard coming in access control system because it's a very important system in most of the buildings. So you can go through them and have a look. And uh, if I am to tell these things in Singhala, um, access control system, aka uh, architecture, they cut you know, a cut you know, two layer architecture, aka a controller, a kai decision making, you can architect uh, access controller predefined through layers to not you know, a cut up again a credential gun, a cut, you know, a decision, a cut gun, a cut, you know, a hard day apart, a cut, a reno, a kin decision, a can do a arena, a cut, a hard day, but my component to not. Uh, a credential it was a decision a it was a Doraval Sai Adala hard day apart. Okay, are me decision gun nekai credential gun nekai a cut at the anona, a pegrigana two lay architecture, a kilo calculus separate than a pegrigana three lay architecture. Three lay architecture is most secure, Ugunitagan decision gun nekinaman and credential gun the anne, a monster monarchy of chemical and security arrangement together, security person and decision again. Uh, yeah, man, credential is not there. That means our threat to our government. Our people are not aware of it. Because in front of the entrance, 
he doesn't have any power. Um, he doesn't have any power. So he goes to the next. Yeah, Ilanga level like a gila tamai, Kiane, may make any carino, Dora in the gila. Ekatamai, three layer architecture. With the quota readers, the no readers holding up to one card by with Akaranda, fingerprint, facial expression, Nevatama, readers, solo deva. Ilanga reader again, the control of the data, Yavandoni, Mayavana from a key pack in Athu from a Hatrak Tiana, Mankaling Kiwagi, Eka Quadabulam, vegan kin protocol like a got to details to put it around, if the Kiana can control like a Yavand, Emanathan, voice DPO, RS for it, Pagan protocol like a Rayavand Pulva, Emanathan, Ethernet Rayavand Pulva, Emanathan, wireless Yavand Pulva, Okada, Pradhana Kramatuna, reader like a sa, control like a Katana. It would have made data for Nikang Yavand, Mima Nikang. Nikama then the beha, ABC, Kenneka Nikama then the make encrypt color then do, and that's the Tavakin Pulva, Edura Aragon. If you put encrypt color, then you put encryption methods, good up, you know, maybe like monkey pack over the Tataka, advanced encryption method, AES, Diffie, Holman, if you put a D's digital encryption, cipher, CSA cipher, Vagadeval monkey pack, Kataka, of course, CSA cipher and Pavichikaran. You get encryption method, you know, make Hari Lassana subject, take up, Kogon Villa, you put a Hadar and uh the may data encrypt current. Let us take a encryption of the weather in a villa or weather, but decrypt current would have a take a prashnia. Take a decrypt color, uh control the decision, decision which one to one verification and one to one verification, one to one verification the uh record the record they have balan, make a good up popular in European countries. Uh, even what you know, one to eight e, amateur of the one to n verification, make like, the database check color the main edition. Like, like, may allow to know the good like, Asian region or good up popular me one to n can verification, like, one to one verification like, European countries or popular product like, import current European countries or going to bear one to n verification at the margin of the import current. By Asian region, like uh, good Korean product, you know, Taiwan product, you know, Chinese product, you know, one to end verification. Like that, you know, it was a hardware component. You know, hardware component. Even I didn't tell that in English. Uh, there is a fail safe and fail uh, secure. Uh, fail safe means uh, during a power failure, door should be open. Fail secure means during a power failure, door remain closed itself. Fail safety, and ne. Power failure kadi dora arrange do ne fail fail safe. Ito kotha apite yanda pulva kadi. Jethi ning eliyari yanda pulva. Ito fail safe. Fail secure kya ne power failure kadi dora remain closed. Jethi ning eka hadan da pulva normally open normally point selection ne kano. Tamaning in winner ata bola fail secure dora kya gan. Ito kotha fire department jethi ning approval gan. We have to get the fire department approval if we are trying to install a fail secure because it's too risky. During an emergency, if the door remains closed, there will be a lot of catastrophic results. So, in order to avoid that, uh, you have to ensure that uh, no any life will be under threat uh, during an emergency. Uh, Harry, uh, right. Then, yeah. Now I am getting into the ICT part, information and communication technology. Uh, that I was invited to do that part. Also, nowadays, whatever that you are using uh, needs. Communication. So ICT plays a very, very big role, ICT component. Now we are remotely connected via the IC, due to the advancement of ICT. We, we did not have this privilege few years back, few decades back. But nowadays, people are so close to each other due to this advancement uh, through the internet. But of course, physically, we are so far. That's another side. Right? So let me, uh, I, I hope you would recognize most of the icons and uh, symbols here. These all have been made reality due to the advancement of uh, these technologies. Now, again, this industry has been categorized into seven layer, physical layer, data link layer, network, transport, session, and presentation. These are basically software layers. These all are software layer. Application layer is the layer where you see all the uh, application like Facebook, Netflix, YouTube, uh, Google Chrome, everything you are coming uh, that we are having coming under application layer. And uh, these are the physical layers. You, physical layer in the sense, physical component could be seen in these three layers. Right? Uh, physical layer basically implies all the cables, even Wi Fi sometimes. You know, Wi Fi, of course, we can't see, but Wi Fi antennas and everything coming under physical layer. Data link layer means uh, 
uh, how you capture the network. Mostly the switches coming under this layer. Network layer means data routing. How the because sometimes you may have to divert your information to the correct destination. So that happens in the uh, network layer. So if you can't uh, remember this, that's a very easy poem. Please do not throw sausage pizza away. I hope you will not forget it. Physical data link layer, network layer, transport layer, session layer, presentation and application. Those are the seven layers that now, while I'm talking here, the information that have been transferred in between should go through these all the seven layers at, at uh, your end and my end. Right. Uh, physical layer component basically involves uh, your RJ45 jack and the patch panel. Uh, then the outlet is there, CAT6, CAT5, uh, CAT7 cables are also available, patch panel and the switches. This is a physical component. And the cable parameters nowadays, yeah, actually in Sri Lanka, we can see now CAT6, CAT6A is also available, but these things are not being imported uh, right now. Um, with their capability and the distance have not been mentioned, but usually the maximum distance between two point in uh, CAT uh, Ethernet is 100 meters, but in practical case, we would keep it less than that. However, the information transferring capacity has drastically gone up nowadays. So physical layer uh, component would be seen like this if you're using uh, fiber as a medium. Fiber, yeah. Fiber connection, wired connection, fiber connection, and Wi-Fi connection. Those are the most popular connection that we can provide. Fiber, again, of course, you have to have uh, fiber patch panels um, and fiber switches are there, for especially for bulk information transfer. But nowadays, in terms of information transferring, both are having uh, same capability, copper cable and, uh, I mean, in, in, in my context, right, in the context that we are regularly interacting. Uh, but of course, uh, if you go to the advanced level, fiber would be exceeding. But in our commercial and day-to-day -day application, I do see uh, fiber and um, copper cables are almost having the same level. Uh, again, you will get a single mode fiber cable and multi mode fiber cable. Multi mode fiber cable, the distance is somewhat lower compared to single mode cable. And then, next thing is the uh, Wi Fi connectivity, physical layer Wi Fi connectivity. Of course, we have a Wi Fi router, and all the clients are connected to the AR. Um, so, when you install a Wi Fi AP, we call it access point Wi Fi AP, the coverage would be seen like that. This is called a heat map. Usually, uh, when you before you getting into the uh, Wi-Fi installation, um, you have to understand how the heat map would work. You don't have to go for a very complex devices nowadays. Even a small uh, phone with a small software installed would do this job for you. How the wi in order to get the Wi-Fi coverage. So once you get all the component connected, it would look like this. You have in internet and firewalls. Firewalls are for special protection to prevent some un unauthorized access. And then there will be a router, as you know. Uh, router is for information diverting. And then the uh, switches are there, then Wi Fi routers are there. Uh, and you can connect these things. Especially nowadays, there's a huge demand. I'm getting so many inquiries from the people, especially uh, in a household, you will get, uh, you know, dialogue or maybe um, SLT fiber connection coming to the home. How can I arrange my internal data connectivity? How can I get my TV connection? How can I get my telephone connection? So these things should be managed properly. Otherwise, certain things would get redundant. Uh, Sometimes for the same purpose, you will have a few, few connections. So in order to minimize that, nowadays there's another market developed in Sri Lanka for uh, managing this uh, fiber connectivity for household applications. Um, and again, uh, the normal network arrangement all the devices connected to first layer of switch first layer in the sense i mean this is not uh, now here also you have layers we call it layer uh, now here also if you get any switch here any device this is called layer three switch this is called layer two switch layer layer two switch layer three switch of course layer three switches are very expensive compared to layer two devices now here also we'll get one layer but that's a different layer uh, access level, access level, and all the access switches will be connected to the distribution switches, and finally, it's go to the core switch. 
uh, of course, course which has more capability uh, compared to rest of the level. But nowadays, I have seen uh, sometimes you know access switches and distribute. There is no anything called distribution switches. We directly get the uh, connectivity between access and whole level. So your ISP link, internet link, and everything would be connected to the whole level. Wi-Fi, of course, you have seen this. Uh, next thing, important parameter in uh, selecting the switches is the POE, power over Ethernet. Nowadays, we don't have to pull the cable separate with CCTV camera for power purposes. The very same cable used for data transmission could be used for power transmission as well. Uh, so, and uh, POE classes are there, various classes. Based on that classes, uh, you can select the required power. Now here also you have to ensure the uh, total devices connected, number of devices connected to the switch should have less power budget compared to the power that can be delivered by the switch. So that is called power budgeting. So the total power that can be handled by the switch uh, should be less than uh, collective power of all the devices connected. Next thing is the racks. So data racks, uh, <clears throat> this is again uh, kind of expensive device in modern case. Based on the devices that you are going to fix, you have to decide the height of the rack. So height of the rack is decided by number of U's, 5U, 6U. So one U means somewhere around 40 millimeter, 44 millimeter. And the width is defined by uh, inches, 19 inches. It's a world standard. Everywhere, rack will come with 19 uh, inches in. Uh, basically, when you are using any IP system, uh, I mean, IP can be connected. If you are having an IP network already implemented, you can have IP CCTV, IP access control system, IP public addressing, IP TV, data, IP telephone, uh, even BMS and uh, any Ethernet device. Uh, however, from my point of view, whenever I'm doing any design, uh, I keep uh, data network separated from the IP device used for Ethernet. So two racks would be coming, uh, two switches would be coming for almost all the cases because um, data system will carry very sensitive data, your ERP information, your commercial information, very secret information of the organization. So if you expose those information to the uh, Ethernet network, which has uh, CCTV and access control system, people who are coming to repair and modify the CCTV and access control system will have automatically automatic link to this sensitive information as well. And sometimes uh, you will not have uh, permission to access those racks because it has, as a maintenance engineer, if the CCTV camera goes off, you will not be able to access the data rack because it also contains some sensitive information. So in that case, I used to demarcate these two separately. And nowadays we have IP version 4 and IP version 6. Uh, IP version 6 getting popular uh, because it has now 128 bits. The total number of address that can be uh, generated 10 to the power 38, uh, 10 to the power 38 compared to 32-bit uh, IP address because when uh, this was developed, nobody thought that it would get into this level. So we only had 7 billion uh, IP addresses, but you know, even current world population is around 7, 4 billion actually, that's uh, with 32 bits, it is not sufficient. That's why we have something called uh, port forwarding. However, we will be moving very slowly to IP version 6. Uh, so keyword that you would encounter in dealing with uh, any ICT system would be IP addressing, IP version 6, IP version 4, routers and switches, L2, L3, POE switches, copper switches, fiber switches, access distribution and core switches, servers are there, Wi-Fi, AP means access codes. As you component, these are the frequently used uh, wording, fiber single mode and multi-mode, and then you get copper cable, CAT5, CAT6, CAT6, A, CAT7, here is attributed. A. Racks, 19 inch rack, a number of U's will decide how tall the rack is. Patch panel, patch code has to be there. They are the final element which connects to element and the outlet. 
telephone system is also very popular nowadays getting very popular because uh, less cabling uh, pabx and pstn all the uh, analog uh, this is the server basically and uh, you get all uh, devices connected to the pabx digital phone would need uh, more cable compared to analog phone analog phones are very less expensive somewhere around less than 10000 rupees but if you are going with uh, digital phone the pricing would be slightly higher than that not slightly sorry uh, two times three times four times higher than analog phones then the modern advantage is the uh, ip phones voice over ip in this case um, your phone uses ip connection or ethernet connection for communication as i told you especially if you are using for if you are using uh, fiber connection you know for household applications mostly you have to use uh, ethernet phones or sometimes analog phones are also possible yeah and next thing is a g phone uh, g phone stand for uh, gigabit passive optical network so some people call it group passive optical network one advantage with this one is you get one fiber connection and through the splitter you get this white color light into uh, separate colors so in other words separate frequencies so because of this uh, very nature nowadays we have been able to cover a large area of apartment by having very limited number of hardware devices for an example now for multi story building you might need only one or two fiber cable coming into the whole building to cater maybe 600 apartments because through the splitter uh, you segregate these colors white color into separate colors and all the devices connected and the user in house house to house three will have the internet connection even the telephone connection they're working at very high speed definitely you will not be able to see any delay or any issues like that so very popular commercial term I'm, again i'm not <laughs> promoting these things very popular commercial terms for these things are uh, slt fiber uh, dialog fiber by means of having one fiber cable you can cover a very large area for their internet ict application so initially this was uh, introduced to the public as uh, fiber to the home ftth uh, then uh, fiber to the building and then oh sorry fiber to the business nowadays this house and business both combine so that's why they have used x ftth the technical term is um, g phone gigabit fiber optic network the commercial terms are like you know slt fiber uh, recording stops I think it, uh, no no SLT please please continue yeah. and these are the key component onu means uh, what you get at the user end olt means uh, what you have at the uh, initial end this is mostly mounted in the basement and uh, then you know entire building covers we in Sri Lanka, this is the most popular way of doing it. So, uh, OLT and this ONT at the user end, you can have a couple of, usually I have seen, again, I'm not promoting, uh, SLT fiber has four ports in their ONT unit. So, these four ports can be programmed for various purposes, one for television, one for data, and uh, other one for television. Or maybe you can get like uh, whatever combination as you want. However, it is possible to have voice data and video signal. And this is how an splitter works. Uh, so you will get only one fiber cable coming from the central unit that is OLT. And then it is splitted into various outputs. This basically has a separate color and one cable goes to each apartment. And again, when it's come to the CCTV also, you can, uh, now you can understand, you have the camera and direct, this is connected to the EOE, which in the middle. Uh, and you get all the devices. Again, you can see uh, access level, camera connected to the access level switch, and then you get the distribution switch and the core switches. You will see them, uh, see some cross connection that is going through the redundancy. DVR or NVR will be there management server giving workstation servers and this key component will be placed somewhere very secure 
physical appearance i hope you would have seen most of these things this is an outlet patch code and uh, neatness is very important in uh, ict system because if you mess up with one cable it's very difficult to trace so everything should be neatly done uh, all the switches are there all the here you can see fiber patch panel and uh, fiber switch here and uh, these are called sfe module uh, because you have to convert this light signal into a electronic signal uh, because uh, you know switch works on electronic signal that's why the sfe modules are coming in of course these things are very expensive nowadays all the switches used to be at you know couple of uh, thousand rupees eh? but now they are in million rupee range right uh, I yeah, have 20 minutes to do the rest. Right, uh, telling the ICT in uh, Singhala, this is the Megadamai me co item now, Medavasola, up a good devices, CCTV, access control, building automation system, even public addressing system, uh, television. Hama Diakma, then in the other Kali, Monari, Evagi, ICT media, Megakara, I think. May knowledge of Anivaring Ganagandu, I think the Mama make again a minimum classes deal at me, may any system Ganagan, nothing but a CCTV install current, but Anivar make Ganagandu, access control system, make Ganagan. Tenisa make again a Mama good accurate under Una, Ekone, Atram automatically, because the Arava Hiker and the Maker than that. The Enisa may other kind of good companies in Nami, but to make a good growing business a cup, Lankawe, Sahaloke, Alut products, Hamada, Minoa. Make it our pet tama cloud pet and out manga good touch color and metana cloud a carp one make a good hardware component are doing a Namutape level like a pay some and mila lanka within a scale like a gata me devices at least about do pana katakwa tinsa by and deba and may I get a gunning anywhere and what you know. The good over the no mulima a pea patch code like a genal a pay them on the computer like a handone the good a patangan outlet like a dino a component of common a physical layer. So physical layer get a cable patch code may open physical layer. It was a maker made it. It was a maker. 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 It was if you have a layer, you can see layer 3 switches. If you have a switches, you can layer 2 features, layer 3 features, you can see layer 3 switches. If you have a gun, you can see layer 3 switches. If you have a CCD application, you can see layer 3 switches. If you have a gun, you can see layer 3 switches. If you have a gun, you can see layer 3 switches. If you have a gun, you can see layer 3 switches. If you have a अभी तो उगल जाना मैं पोर्ट टेकर तो स्पीड देखा कि ये ना टेन हंड्रेड थाउसेंड एमबीपीएस इच्छा रोने में आप इतने थाउसेंड यान रोने में ना हमको तो कैमरा वगैरह इतने बैंड विद ते का हम दाम लेस देन थाउसेंड तीन दिन तो बोलता टेन हंड्रेड स्विच आ क्या दिया आप इकट्ठे ना आप � एक है ना आप ये तो मो कंपनी है ईआरपी हैंडलिंग ऑल्ड है एचआर हैंडलिंग ऑल्ड है कमर्शियल एप्लीकेशन ऑल्ड वो लो नेटवर्क एक डिसाइड करना ना गानी बारे टेन हंड्रेड थाउसेंड स्पीड देख रहे हैं अंडे मुकदे एक आप इट किया अंडे में एक मुकदे एक आप ही पुलवान तरंग इतने प्रायोरिटी देन � आप इस सीसीटीवी वाले तो एक आवश्यक है तो इसलिए डेटा वॉल्यूम में जेनरेटेड ना तो आप लोग आवश्यक है इसलिए लोगों से विचार करें इधर ये स्विच चेक है ना इधर वासे इतने बुरे टाइम आप ही आप ही लेयर थ्री स्विचेस बड़ा क्लाइड लेयर टू सां लेयर थ्री आता रहा आप ही कनेक्शन ने करते it was a OS OS के ने का optical single mode के ने के तो माय single mode five volt के ने दें अरे अमांग अरे खाली खालीन कता कर रहे हो G phone बोला थी मितेंद्र आप use करने single mode fiber cable ने कर आप use करने single mode वो तो single mode वाला तो बड़ा दिगटे यान ने पुलवा I think वो ठीक है तो हम विशेष एम कता करने दिए ना ITC system वाले दी हर में वैध का neatness की इनका cable mark window ने cable neatly tie up करने ना बोलते हैं कलाती में तो ना 
නැත්තම් මේක මෙස් එකක් වුණොත් එහෙම අපිට හැමාරුයි කිසි දෙයක් ට්‍රේස් කරගන්න. ඊළඟට මම මම හැමෝටම රෙකමන්ඩ් කරන්නේ ඔයාගේ ඉංජිනියරිං ඇප්ලිකේෂන් වලට යූස් කරන්න. මතලා ELV ඇප්ලිකේෂන් වලට යූස් කරන්න නෙට්වර්ක් එක. ඒක තියෙන්න පුළුවන් CCT එක තියෙන්න පුළුවන් බිල්ඩිං ඔටෝමේෂන් එක තියෙන්න පුළුවන් ඇක්සස් කන්ට්‍රෝල් එක තියෙන්න පුළුවන්. මේ ටික වෙනම රැක් එකක් දාලා ඒක වෙනම නෙට්වර්ක් එකක් විතර අරගෙන යනවා. ERP data commercial data තියෙන network එක වෙනම තියාගන්න. ඒ දෙක එකට cross කරන්න යන්න එපා. මොකද මේ දෙගොල්ලෝ මේ මේ network එක deal කරන්නේ two different parts. ELV network එක handle කරන්නේ ගොඩක් වෙලාවට engineering staff එක. අර අනිත් network එක handle කරන්නේ company එකේ IT department. ऑटोमेशन सिस्टम earlier days you can remember our buildings are very simple you know we needed only few facilities but nowadays they have gone up gone taller and they have got very complex and the services and facilities that are needed by the occupant have gone to a very great extent and um, there are uh, again lot of people now earlier days if you watch very old movies you know very less people are there occupying in the building but in modern case one building is more than a city lot of people are occupying hence Uh, you have to provide lot of other aspects are coming becoming prominent safety and health and security these aspects have become very important uh, because they are breathing uh, the air available inside the building so that has to be kept healthy and the security should be there not only for human even for the equipment itself and the appearance you know, it should look so pleasing so these things should be provided at a very less cost that is where the efficiency comes in these things should be done at a very minimal cost these are very expensive features if you try to put lot of uh, effort on those all of course this uh, building living inside the building using the building will be very expensive business so that's why these all the features have become very essential and that has to be provided at a very low cost to us that's where the word efficiency comes in again efficiency has two four use of most efficient equipment for an example you if you need lighting you would use most efficient light source like led or uh, cf would be the most efficient compared to the incandescent type that is one side to be honest uh, now let's say for an air conditioning system uh, most in, what is the most energy efficient air conditioning system that's a decision you have to make but the whole picture efficiency picture doesn't end there just imagine you have the most energy efficient light source in the boardroom but uh, you leave the room without turning it off now you have the most efficient source but it works in vain wastage is there then there's another side coming how to use energy efficient device in most efficient manner that's where the or how to manage your efficient device in most efficient manner that's where the building automation system or building management system comes into picture so you have most efficient devices and that has to be uh, run in most used in most efficient manner so this is where the building automation system comes in because this thing cannot be done manually uh, it's a very painstaking job uh, very tedious job so that's why we need another system to do so and which system should be focused more in a building you will see the hvac system lighting and rest of the equipment but which system should we focus more of course by looking at this pie chart you can understand we have to focus more on hvac system because that is the biggest energy consumer in the building so let's see how this is done now you can see the uh, one of the main uh, requirement why we need a automator system for running air conditioning system is that when you size this these component when you Uh, design this component you will go with the most higher value possible because you now if, if you are designing an air conditioning system for a conference hall you will go with the highest occupancy some number this would be the occupancy and accordingly you decide this all the component you will have the air handling unit chillers and all the pumps and everything will be coming together but 
may be one or two occasion per year you will have the highest occupancy the maximum occupancy rest of the days we will have the lesser occupancy now the system has to be taken to the point where your load and the uh, system parameter comes to together it should be at the same equilibrium point your load and the heat discharge should be at the same level otherwise one side would get compromised for an example if this uh, generation is very high if the load is very high and the the amount of heat that you are taking out is less of course this person will not feel comfortable on the other hand if you take if you run the system at for 100 people occupancy but you have only 50 people sometime uh, this place will get very cold now uh, it would it, it on one hand it will be lead into unnecessary energy consumption and again it would be lead into complaint and here you can see there are a lot of uh, electrically driven components are there. These fans and these motors and compressor, those all need electricity. So if you if you have a system like that, you have to ensure that all the components working in harmony in order to give the maximum best output. That's why the centralized control system is needed in order to evaluate the performance individually and get the best output. So once you put them all together, you will see a lot of component coming together, chillers and uh, heats, uh, this, and a lot of components are coming together. Of course, you need a centralized control system. Uh, chill, chiller system, you, you might get a lot of chillers, a lot of electricity consumed. You have to find out the most optimum point here also. And again, nowadays, we are using a lot of uh, natural sources for applications. Again, the one problem with the nature is not steady, it's varying. However, you have to have the required light level on these surfaces. So you have to use artificial light. If you are using natural sources together with artificial sources, of course, you can understand that there must be a control system to compensate whatever the missing amount. And uh, basically what we do is uh, in building automation system, controlling and monitoring, you have to give your set point value. You have to decide what is your requirement first and then the system will ensure that the given set point will be maintained throughout. Monitoring is also important. Uh, sometimes you might not take any crucial action, uh, but uh, the information should be available with your hand. So in terms of controlling, if you see anything under uh, control, this is the universal sketch. If anything see in control, this is applicable for even economy. If you see that, certain uh, rice price has to be controlled. This is the formula. Now in engineering, in uh, building automation system also now, the temperature is under control. These are the, this is the sketch that we have to understand. We have to measure the evaluate uh, level, and then you have your reference point. Reference point would be your desired value, 25 degree. This is the prevailing value. Error is fed to the controller, and then the controller will have the system. This may be your HU or your motor or pump, and that will be driven accordingly to, to the control signal, and it will deliver the output. Your chilled air will be available accordingly. Now, the controller has many options. Control concept. Controller can have many control concepts. Now, for an example, in, in kindergarten level, you are using certain strategies to control the noise of the class. But those things will not be suitable for your a level classes. They are the approach of the teachers are totally different. None of them will work in your office environment. Nothing should be suitable for your family environment. So that each based on the atmosphere, you have to choose the best control concept. So similarly, based on the equipment and the devices that we're having here, you have to choose the best control concept. So these things are now, these are the control concept available mostly in the building automation system. Uh, two position, three position, proportional, proportional integral, proportional integral derivative, and some artificial control uh, strategies are also there. But these are the most popular. Artificial intelligence is not that much used. So basically, building automation system uh, engage with this uh, lighting and air conditioning, solar, energy storage, lift, and everything nowadays. Um, so that's why it has become uh, very advanced. So here I have given the uh, standard definition for building automation system. It's a computer-based system. 
uh, basically controlling all the electrical and mechanical de uh, devices. Based on this slide, actually, I can talk around 30 minutes uh, because there are a lot of things to discuss, even though it seems very simple here. Uh, but let's see if you, if you have to mention the view there, we will discuss them as well. Benefits, I will be sharing this presentation uh, so you can see the benefit. Actually, this is an actual photograph of a building automation system that I involved in uh, Cinema Lakeside Hotel, uh, my very first building automation system installation in Sri Lanka. Uh, this hotel was commissioned in 1983. You can see all the things uh, were controlled by means of this massive panel at the background. All the cables were coming here from respective devices, but uh, we concentrated everything into one smaller PC. Now you can monitor and control entire building by means of this one single computer. It doesn't end there, of course, uh, certain thing can be taken to your mobile phone uh, and uh, you can do a lot of benchmarking and uh, timely operational and control are also possible through the building information system. So this is the architecture basically. So you have to follow the architecture uh, based on the sensors and actuators and then you get the controllers and there are supervisory controllers and then finally uh, control. And uh, these are the signal uh, level used in the building automation system because you have to transfer this information from here to here. So you would be using 4 to 20 or 0 to 10 uh, voltage or current signal or resistive signals are also there. Accuracy plays a very big role. So you can go through here, you can read it, but uh, this involves a very large story. Uh, let's, let's see if time permits, I will uh, discuss that as well. Various sensors found in the industry, uh, temperature sensors and active, uh, passive sensors and active sensors are there, some uh, status sensor. If you want to detect a flow inside the water pipe, we are using status sensors. <clears throat> Various uh, sensors again, you can go through them later. This is a flow meter, this is an electromagnetic flow meter, this is a PTO meter, these are pressure sensors, this is a differential pressure sensor, uh, CO2 sensor, wall mounted duct mount, and RH sensor. Again, uh, various pressure sensors are also there. The principle behind electromagnetic flow meter, something very interesting to learn. Uh, so, in the future, we will be discussing them as well. Uh, and then the actuators, of course, uh, very bottom layer comprised of sensors and actuators. As I show you in the previous diagram here, uh, see now, the, once you take the control action, once you decide the opening or closing, that has to be delegated to the actuator, which is at the system. So this is where the actuators are coming into the picture. So then we have to learn about the actuators as well. So building automation system is a very wide subject and very interesting subject. So I'm inviting you all to get involved in this subject as well. Uh, even though we have a large number of sensors, actually actuators are very less in number. Uh, you will get valve. You, you may have to regulate the flow going to uh, the air conditioning system. You may have to reduce the speed or increase the speed. You may have to change the air flow through an air duct for which you are using amp actuators. These are motorized valve, VSDs, a uh, few prominent actuators. Valve sizing is a very important subject because you have to correct, correctly choose the valves. So almost all the valves that are noted in building automation system are located here. Uh, and then also when you are turning off a, on, or, off a pump or a motor, you have to follow the correct circuitry. DOL or star delta has to be there. And finally, we are coming to the control. I hope you can remember here we have the control concept. Uh, so most prominent control concepts are two position, DAT control, three position, uh, two position, proportional integral and derivative. If you are using two position controlling, the final end result would be something like this. But of course, you know that uh, this kind of control system cannot be used if your main chill water system because it will turn on and off. Such a cyclic operation will be very harmful to the whole insulation. But for guest room temperature controlling, this is okay because with this uh, small Valleys and hike will, uh, valleys and uh, peaks will not be detected by human skin. So for a small application, this is okay. But of course, if you try to control your chiller, chill water system pumps uh, accordingly, definitely it will not be suitable. Uh, the controllers used for building automation would be looking, appearing something like this. Uh, we have a lot of uh, terminals to connect various sensors uh, and uh, these are the few controllers that I have extracted. And again, uh, we may have to communicate with uh, various devices in the building automation system also. So number of uh, 
variation found in uh, physical layer you know now physical layer is uh, serial communication and parallel communication are there and rs485 rs232 usb is uh, something that you know very well and ethernet next thing is how you capture the network now earlier case we had directly switches but uh, when you have a lot of controllers together uh, sometimes we may have to use some different technologies in uh, capturing the network or data link layer uh, master save is one uh, strategy you have one master and there are a lot of slaves uh, each slave will have their own time to uh, talk to communicate peer to peer network is almost like computer network uh, this is being used in the ethernet network so those things also uh, learn you should learn these things uh, when you are getting into the network architecture and there are many uh, medium available in the uh, building automation architecture ethernet is also there but uh, lon talks uh, arcnet arcnet is not that much popular you already know gpon rs232 rs485 usb technologies are there but wireless technologies are also available zigbee wi-fi bluetooth are also being used especially for access control system uh, bluetooth and wi-fi and zigbee uh, being used Nowadays, the IoT is getting very popular. Uh, lots of protocols are there for IoT application. For an example, if you want to get um, a meter reading from, uh, you know, large territory, uh, water meter reading from a city, it's very difficult for you to pull the cable to each and every meter. So that's where this uh, long range uh, protocols are there. Those are called LoRa protocol, especially made for long range application covering wider area. And Z waves we are for a very smaller range, but they are very effective, consuming less amount of power. But this is not the end. There are a lot of other protocols available in the uh, coming under IoT uh, market. Of course, we have to have a software again. Uh, even in BMS, also the central computer is responsible for uh, controlling all the uh, devices and uh, having graphic pages. Finally, you have to have a graphic page. These are the program. Once you get all the devices connected together, this is how the program would look like. For an example, uh, for this particular application, for this particular operation, this is how the program would look like. So learning about programming is not a very big thing. Uh, learning about the programming language. What you have to learn is the algorithm. How these devices are controlled. That sequence and order plays a very big role. So these are a few graphic pages finally that you would get uh, once you do this. Next, finally, we have to learn about the control strategies. Since uh, we have a lot of component coming together uh, like this, you must know how these things are. Now, vision. Uh, without knowing uh, the sequence and algorithm behind this and uh, finally nobody gets the expected out and uh, again uh, control how uh, an hu is controlled uh, because again here you can see different stages and different components so you must be aware of the role of each devices normal appearance of an hu few terminologies found in the air conditioning system uh, CAV, constant air volume, VAV, PAU, and of course, in the uh, next lectures, I hope uh, next series of lecture you will be able to understand. There will be a lot of information under this subject also, so you can learn them there. Demand ventilation control, demand ventilation controlling coming under again uh, building automation system because based on the carbon dioxide level, we have to control the uh, ventilation. Chiller controlling also plays a very big role because you have to get the system to the working point where load and the heat discharge matches together so you have to have some understanding on chiller and heat ejection circuit and the water distribution circuit this is coming under water distribution circuit this is heat ejection circuit right uh, these are the uh, key things which i want to highlight there are a few chill water circuit i just uh, highlighted you these things uh, since uh, you have uh, next lecture series under air conditioning, you will be able to learn this. How to design a building automation system? Uh, there are a few important documents needed. Sketches are needed because sketches will tell you how to how the system would work. 
and then you have to write the control strategies how the system will be operated based on those all you have to design your point list and uh, specification has to be there which will define how accurate your sensors are and based on the point list you will uh, design your you will collect your ddc controllers and then finally you will follow these all the stages until you get the uh, final system done uh, there is some live building automation system available in the internet uh, if you click on this link, you can get access with that. Uh, I will be sharing this information with you and try to click on this and uh, use that building automation system and you can get some idea. And other than that, uh, yeah, uh, my information and uh, all the uh, organizers information will also be available here. I'm ready to uh, help you whenever you need any assistance in terms of this. That is the end of my lecture and thank you very much for tolerating me almost for two hours. I hope you got something valuable. Uh, please follow the theory always because sometimes I have seen people do not uh, under follow the theory thinking that it is anyway working, but theories are very much needed when system goes wrong. So that's where the uh, theory plays a very big role. Don't expect engineering system would run always perfectly. It will definitely play some problem. So that's why theories are needed. So thank you very much again. And uh, I'm wishing you all the best in your future endeavors. Thank you very much for coming in numbers and listening to me for the last two hours. I'm ready for answering any question. Back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Engineer Jagat. Thank you very much. And yes, we have uh, witnessed the heavy content, briefed, compressed very effectively. And uh, thank, thank you very much for going through almost all these ELU systems, and which is very effective. And I'm sure that most of the professionals here might have got something better and bigger. So thank you very much, Engineer Jagat. Thanks a lot. And ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, almost run out with our timing. So it's 9.37. Therefore, apologetically, we cannot give any opportunities for Q&A. So what we can do is you, if you have any question, please type it and send it to the WhatsApp group or send it to myself or uh, Kumara or Danushka, who are the organizers here. So you can send different uh, WhatsApp messages of your questions. So we will compile all, the, all of them and send to our presenter. Then we can get his answers and within uh, as soon as possible, once they have a chance, chance and time and with the discretion of Engineer Jagat, we will get them and share with you all. And Engineer Jagat, uh, are you in a position to share this uh, PDF uh, presentation with the presenters? You're muted. Yeah, I will be sending it to you. I hope you can send it to the relevant. Uh, tonight, I will send it to you. Yeah, please. And if you can convert it to PDF itself, I think that's better because our, yes. And thank you very much. And we will share the presentation so you can go through and read through. And definitely as Jagat, Engineer Jagat highlighted, so the knowledge, is a wealth which we can come out this uh, many of the issues right now we are facing and engineer Jagat, do you have anything uh, finally to give as a remark because there are a lot of uh, young engineers and there are a lot of uh, undergraduates listening to this uh, session do you have any final remarks to conclude the session uh, final remark in the sense uh, if you are getting into this field uh, remember uh, you have to invest a great deal of time because it's a very dynamic field. Uh, everything is changing on an uh, annual basis, you know, maybe, you know, monthly basis. And it's a very interesting field. And, uh, you know, you have to deal with a lot of other sub components. And if you are getting into building automation system, of course, you have to learn air conditioning also. Uh, because you can't simply put these things. And uh, next thing, as uh, young engineers also, whatever you do, do it with your heart. And uh, grow your desire to be the best in that particular thing because we need uh, thank you very much for those all the uh, there are hundreds of mentioned. messages here yeah. <laughs> yeah. thank you very much and uh, send me your question of course uh, there are a lot of questions i'm very much eager to find it but unfortunately we are running out of time sometimes these subjects you know takes four days five days eight days to complete but uh, it's very difficult to get into for two hours period i tried my best to give you the best i hope uh, we have created some interest together with magnus team and that was the idea so finally as nalin said if you are an engineer whatever you do do with your heart definitely you will be successful in engineering thank, thank you. you thank you thank you engineer jagat and we highly appreciate and we we take this as a privilege to be with you for the last uh, two two and a half hours thank you very much ladies and gentlemen as we have mentioned this 
CPD program or the day session is not just sharing the whole knowledge, but this is an eye opening which you which we can give you that there are opportunities, there are areas which we have to improve, especially the CPD stands for continuous professional development. So your basic degree or you have learned something maybe 10, 15 years back, but you have to update your knowledge with the latest development. So that's uh, one of the key objective of this program. And with that remark, ladies and gentlemen, we take this opportunity to thank you very much for being a, such a dynamic audience. And we will meet you for the next or the final session by next Sunday, 7.30, the same time. So we'll see you by next Sunday, by then. Uh, thanks a lot and have a pleasant evening. Good night.